It has no venom, no claws, and no fangs. It looks like something that might be found in any pond, a relic from a simpler time. But this appearance is a lie. This creature is one of the most ruthlessly successful biological invaders on the planet. An animal so voracious, it will eat birds, snakes, and even its own kind without hesitation. This is the story of how humans took this one frog, spread it across the globe, and in doing so, unleashed an unstoppable plague that is still spreading today. Understanding the devastation begins with understanding the creature itself, the American bullfrog. Native to the swamps and ponds of eastern North America, it is a masterpiece of simple, brutal efficiency. It is the largest frog on the continent, a behemoth that can weigh up to two pounds and measure eight inches long, but its size is the least terrifying thing about it. Its true power lies in its design. Its primary weapon is its mouth, a cavernous opening that can stretch to incredible widths, allowing it to swallow prey almost as large as itself. Its strategy is simple. If it moves, and if it fits, it eats. Its diet isn't just insects, it's anything that moves. Spiders, scorpions, fish, lizards, garter snakes, ducklings, bats that fly too close to the water, and rodents that come for a drink. They are cannibals, readily swallowing smaller frogs of any species, including their own. Their attack is a blur of motion, a powerful lunge from legs that can propel it six feet in a single leap. A sticky, elastic tongue fires out, grabs the victim, and yanks it into a mouth that doesn't just swallow, but crushes. They are perfect ambush predators that turn every shoreline into a death trap. Their second weapon is reproduction on an industrial scale. A single female can lay a clutch of up to 20,000 eggs, a floating gelatinous sheet that blankets the water's surface. While other species lay a few hundred eggs, the bullfrog floods the environment with its offspring. For centuries, this perfect predator was contained to its native habitat, held in check by its own ecosystem of predators and competitors. But in the late 1800s and early 1900s, humans had an idea. People wanted a new food source, specifically frog legs. And so, the invasion began. Bullfrogs were packed into crates and shipped across the country to the American West. They were flown across oceans to Europe, South America, and Asia, they were released into pristine lakes and rivers, sometimes to be farmed, other times to control pests. But the farmers and scientists who released them had no idea what they were truly doing. They weren't introducing a new species. They were releasing a biological plague. Nowhere was this devastation clearer than in California. The state was once home to a thriving population of the California red-legged frog a species that had evolved over millennia in a delicate balance with its environment. When the bullfrog arrived, that balance was shattered. The red-legged frog had never faced a predator like this. It was slow, unprepared, and quickly became a primary food source. The bullfrog's massive tadpoles consumed the red-legged frog's food supply while the adult bullfrogs simply ate the adult red-legged frogs. Entire populations that had existed for thousands of years were devoured in a matter of decades. The bullfrog didn't just join the food chain, it consumed it, leaving a void of silence where there was once a chorus of native life. But the true horror of the bullfrog plague isn't what it eats. It's the invisible disease it carries. The bullfrog is a carrier for a microscopic, waterborne fungus called Batrachochytrium dendrobotitis. It is commonly known as chytrid. To the bullfrog, which co-evolved with this fungus, it is a minor inconvenience. They are almost completely immune. But to hundreds of other amphibian species around the world who had never been exposed to it, it is a death sentence. The fungus is a silent, efficient killer. It attacks the keratin in a frog's skin, 
the organ used for breathing and absorbing water and critical electrolytes. As the infection progresses, the skin thickens, and the frog can no longer maintain its body's delicate balance. It becomes lethargic, its movements slow, and eventually it suffers the equivalent of a heart attack. It is brutally effective, with a near 100% mortality rate in susceptible species. As the bullfrogs spread across the globe, they brought this invisible killer with them. They turned every pond, every stream, every pristine lake they entered into a contaminated zone. They became the Typhoid Mary of the amphibian world. Native frogs that managed to escape the bullfrog's jaws would soon find themselves dying from an enemy they couldn't see. This is the true plague, a silent, waterborne infection spread by an invader that is immune to its effects. Scientists now believe this single fungus spread primarily by the global trade of bullfrogs are a leading cause of the single greatest mass extinction of vertebrates in modern history, wiping out over 90 species and causing catastrophic declines in hundreds more. So what is being done to stop it? Eradication efforts are failing badly. Around the world, conservation agencies are spending millions of dollars trying to eradicate them. Teams go out at night, hunting them one by one. Entire lakes have been drained and poisoned in desperate attempts to kill every last tadpole. Fences have been built, but it's almost impossible. The bullfrog is too resilient. The tadpoles can survive for over two years, hiding in the mud of a drying pond, waiting for the rain. If even one pregnant female or... If a handful of tadpoles survive an eradication effort, the population can rebound to its former size in a single season. They are too tough, too adaptable, and they breed too fast. For every one they remove, a hundred more seem to take its place. It started with a simple idea, a desire for a new food source, but it ended in a global ecological disaster. The story of the American bullfrog is a brutal lesson in consequences. A reminder that when humans move a species from one world to another, the animal is not the only thing that is moved. Its appetite, its dominance, and sometimes its plague are moved with it. Humanity is now living with the fallout. Of an invasion it started, but has no idea how to end.